uh, the question for you, Shella. Um, Anne Marie says, "What's the best show? Um, I, you know, you worked on X Factor, Britain's Got Talent, Geordie Shaw. What's the best show, Shella?" Um, do you know what? That is genuinely a really hard question because, like, I have such an amazing time on these shows. Like, you meet like. Ollie, Louie, we've been friends for like nine years or something like that. We have such a good time together that it would be so hard to actually pinpoint which one was the best. But, you know, I guess working on different shows, you have ups and downs on both. But, yeah, it's so difficult to actually pinpoint. But when, when I look back to when we were all runners together, that was on Britain's Got Talent, X Factor, even though, like, we were runners, we had such an amazing time that some experiences that you just don't even know what you went through but you went through together and just had the best okay. time so actually i'd probably say back then when i first started out was really fun okay ollie uh from matthew says how is brexit and <laughs> sorry about this ollie <laughs> how's brexit and covid affecting the industry and how have you all been able to deal with the circumstances? We'll start with you, Ollie, but jump in, everyone, if you want to let, you know, let us know. How is it? Is it being tough? Well, I think basically, I mean, TV is very adaptable and uh, I've been lucky and I know a lot of the industry hasn't originally. But I think um, the, reason, the, the reason why TV is so adaptable is that basically it's people with a lot of sort of creative juices and we've worked out systems and ways in which we can work under the circumstances. So there's big studio shows happening at the moment. They're filming The Voice this week. Uh, I, I'm uh, currently doing Gogglebox um, and we were, we're producing from the back of a van. There's just creative ways that you can, you can do it. I actually just did a show that we all got tested. We're all in a bubble uh, called Don't Rock the Boat, which is out in November. I love it. With um, the cricketer. Freddie Prince Yes. Yeah. So I was celeb producer on that. And um, basically we were all our own bubble, and but we couldn't go outside the bubble. So there's ways in which the industry have started coping. So ultimately it did affect it for a while, but for people going into TV now and starting up, I don't think it'll have too much of an effect. Maybe it will be the social side of things may be affected, but that'll come in time and you'll realise it's one of the best industries to find friends for everything. Anyone else want to contribute to that? COVID uh, and how it's affecting you or do you think Ollie's summed it up? Well, to be honest, I would agree with all. Like I've been in the same position where I've been quite lucky. I've been at Lad Bible and so all our platforms are online. So I've been quite lucky to be able to work from home and especially if you're working in casting, um, it is it can be done remotely. So I've been quite lucky in that respect, but I am going on to another show where we'll be following the guidelines and doing, you know, PPE. Mm. We've all got to kind of be tested, isolate. So we're all kind of adapting to what okay. is happening. So yeah, all right. we'll it all. Okay, let's go. Well, the questions, thank you so much, guys. You are sending in some brilliant questions. I know a lot of you want to send your show reels to these the, to the to our panel as well. We'll talk about that at the end. Um, hi Letitia. Um, hi, brilliant panel. She says you're brilliant. That's great. That could get her a job. That could get her a job. Uh, she says she loves presenting, um, but she she you know she's tried everything. She's struggling to get her foot in the door. Can anyone tell her what to do? Let's start with Louis. You know, it's a tough one for me because generally speaking, the presenters that I tend to hire for my shows are already established. So it, I appreciate how tough it is for kind of new presenters to actually get into the industry. Um, I suppose, you know, like we live in a world where, you know, everyone is a content creator now. So, you know, you, you, you have the abilities to, you know, to present things like that on your phone, using Instagram, using like social media, things like that. So as kind of like a base, right, I suppose that's probably where I would start. And then I would try and build my platform from on top of there. Um, social media is a great tool that if you don't have like a lot of experience that actually it will set you apart from other people. Um, like quite often, you know, if we like, if we are looking for kind of new and upcoming presenters, it tends to be like, we'll look for people that already have a bit of a following in social media. Um, so as kind of like a starting point, I would suggest kind of just really pushing yourself via social media and then seeing where that goes from there. Okay, Sarah says, 
Loving the energy, guys, you're bringing on a Wednesday morning. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. They're great, aren't they? They should have their own entertainment show, in my opinion. Um, but she wants to ask uh, Naz and all the all the panellists, did you start as freelancers or were you employed? We'll start with you, Naz, and then we'll go to Oliver and then Shayla. Yeah, I um, um, yeah, I start as a freelance and I'm still freelancing. Most people on TV, I think, are as freelance. Um, and yeah, I think if you're starting up, you have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Ollie, Ollie, are you only as good as your last show? Oh, absolutely. I mean, everyone remembers your last show. So, um, but I, basically, I wouldn't feel the pressure of that. I mean, the thing is, everyone at the start is quite worried about making mistakes. What, I, what my advice is, don't worry about making mistakes. I think everyone on, on this panel will remember a major mistake that they made when they were a runner. And you can pinpoint that in your mind right now. Well, you learn from those. And everyone does it. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. I've got someone who's working at the moment. As, as long as someone's working really hard and someone really cares, it doesn't matter if they make mistakes. And the second thing is be proactive because um, I've got someone working with me at the moment that like she she sort of knows my, in my mind, my next move, she's learned it so much that, you know, she'll think about what I'm going to do next. And then I, I get to the position oh, that I'm, um, you know, going to do something and she's already done it for me. So wow. those little nuances and little things that you that that will elevate you quicker they're the ones but everyone starts as a runner and everyone makes mistakes so don't stress about it uh shala um phoebe says do you think right now is a terrible time to be looking for runner jobs be honest with me phoebe says well i mean i will admit obviously over the summer things weren't in production but actually this is an amazing time right now because things are starting up again so that there's actually more productions happening at the moment so this Facebook groups there's online like a, back in the day I did a placement had to apply for it Ollie had to ring you know the, the same person every day to get a job there's so many platforms and places to find these opportunities so we should utilize them like Facebook has so many groups on there and at the moment what I've noticed recently as well I've been getting loads of calls about shows that are coming up so actually bring quite a good period of time because nothing has been being made we're now adapting to how we have to make things and more things are being created so it's actually quite a good time to get your foot in the door also a lot of people are in the same position so if someone was to just randomly message me and ask for advice we're all kind of going through what has just happened so there's more people doing like webinars like this like offering advice there's just this opportunity there for people to search and find that so i would say it's a good time to start looking uh, louis we're getting quite a lot of questions thank you uh, andrew or oh gosh uh, let me see there's loads bianca do you have to go to university to to make it within television did you, any of you go to university um she stuck it quite a lot of people stuck in this middle ground should they go to university get a media degree or should they just go for it louis I love that everyone on this call is literally shaking their heads at the same time. So, I mean, like, university has like a lot of benefits, like you'll learn a lot of tools through that, you know, um, but as, as a whole, you definitely don't need to go to university to television. I went to university, I didn't study television, I studied photography, weirdly, but you know, I actually wish that it, that I just didn't do that and I literally just went in to try and get like runner work a little bit earlier get apprenticeships under your belts things like that I also think as well a lot of television is kind of it's not just whether you can you know have a camera shoot or anything like that there's so much more to it and actually being a slightly broader person you bring individual skills to that production office or production what it is that you're doing that are really really beneficial so I definitely don't feel like you know, don't feel like to get into television, you need to go and do a media degree. That's definitely, definitely not the case. If anything, a media degree is going to set you apart from all those people that have done a media degree. And as an employer looking through CVs, you'll think, oh, you know what, that person's got that experience in that. So, so what do you think, Ollie, uh, Bianca and all the, <laughs> Andrew and all these people, you're, the power is in your hands. <laughs> I mean, I, I, what what i mean i don't want to put too many people off i mean you, ultimately louis right you don't necessarily need it but what it gave me if i was going to 
be the sort of devil's advocate to it is it gave me confidence so you know what and obviously university is a brilliant time as well um so it gave me confidence and when I went into that setting I was already sort of felt like I had a bit of an edge over other people maybe not maybe that's not correct but I don't want to stop people's university experience so um it gave me a bit of confidence basically Naz well, I came to TV by a different route. Like I had a previous career. So I started up again at 30 with no connections, having to get a job as a runner. So I don't think you need, I mean, my experience, I don't think you needed a degree. I just think you need to work hard and really try and get those connections like everyone on this panel has. So, and I think if you come from, whether you have done a degree or whether you've done another degree or you haven't, if you can able and you're able to show the different experience you're able to bring to a job and show your employer that, I think that that speaks miles. And I think I personally found that that I was able to bring transferable skills that people were looking at. Okay, wow, you've got the perseverance and you've got new ideas, which is great in telly. Shala? Um, I'm the same. Like I went to uni and I actually did my degree in television and radio. So for me, I gained like key skills there of like, I would go to a job and I would have experience of how to use the desk or I started off like I did a placement at Radio One um, and like I knew how to use the desk and how to use the equipment but I'd learned that in uni that I probably wouldn't have learned if I hadn't have gone but I'm the same kind of thing of where you don't necessarily need to go to uni in order to get a job I was getting experience on the side as well Okay, uh, Sarah's just quickly said um, um, she's got a BA and an MA uh, neither media related. Her previous jobs are NHS and law. She's also 30, like Naz. Is it harder to start from the bottom? Do you think younger people have an advantage, Louis? Um, I actually, I actually don't because Jen, like, I did, no disrespect to anyone, but I tend to find that if you're to it slightly later in life, it's generally because you really want it. And I generally find kind of people that are coming to it slightly later have got a you know like they'll work a little bit harder they've got a bit more drive about them because you know generally speaking the majority of people that are starting as runners are you know quite young and um which, which is brilliant but yeah i definitely don't feel like just because you're a little bit older that those opportunities aren't open to you definitely not emily to ollie how long were you uh, a runner before you got promoted up See, I had an unusual route. It took me a bit longer because I, when I, I, I almost did exactly the same thing. I was still a runner at 25 because when I went to Australia, I came, I came back uh, after a couple of years of working there and, and I um, didn't know anyone when I came back. So I took a run, runner job and there's no shame in it. It just, it, it, it's ultimately when you're a bit older, people take you more seriously that you do actually want it. And actually your life experience actually quickens your progression up anyway. So yeah. um, it took me a couple of years, but I mean, once you're there, you're there. Yeah. Uh, Hassan says um, well, to everybody, he's drawn into the idea of having shows that appeal to the whole family. Uh, he's 23. He wants, you know, he wants to, he wants ideas from you. He's thinking back to 10 years ago when X Factor was getting 13 million viewers a week. It was a massive event television wise. You couldn't escape it. You know, what's, where is the next big family show? Um, we'll start with you, Naz. Where, where is it going to come from? Because Britain's Got Talent got six million at the weekend for the final. So are we, are we bored, dare I say it, of Judge Leg shows? I I think that, I mean, in my personal experience, I think in the current climate with people at home, people want these big entertainment shows. And I think, you know, that's what they like. Like people can't go out and they, they're going to be at home. Also, I think, you know, the shows are going to come from the next entertainment shows and whether that, you know, talent shows are still really popular. And I think people still like seeing that, whether that's Strictly Come Dancing or Dancing in Ice. I think people still, I, I think people still like it. I mean, the panel might think differently. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, I I actually think it's quite important for us to bear in mind that the TV viewing natures and cultures have changed massively from those days from when X Factor was pulling in like you know 12, 13, 14 million. Show anymore, just don't pull in that number. That's not because necessarily that they're any less popular, it's just because the way that we watch TV is different. 
Um, I think entertainment shows will always have a place in this country. You look at kind of, you know, Little Mix's new show at the moment, you know, it feels, it's a big new entertainment show, but it feels refreshing and it feels different and it feels like it's slightly different to the format that we're so used to. So I definitely feel like that, you know, judge-led shows, yes, maybe kind of, you know, the, the way those judge-led shows will work will change in the fact that, you know, it's quite nice having Little Mix as the judges, you know, as opposed to kind of, you know, industry experts. And so, you know, maybe that's a, a way that things will change, but I certainly think that, you know, those big entertainment shows are going to be a staple for a long time. Okay. Uh, Shala? Um, I mean, it's the same thing, really, with, like, if you think about back in the day when talent shows existed as well, like, with these have been going on for a very long time. I think any format will take a section or, t like, place in time where it, jolts a little bit and goes down and then there's a new way and a new show to watch but something else will come back and it'll be revived and people will be into it again I don't think it's something that's going to go away I think Lou is right that there are different platforms and different places to watch these mm. shows so like an episode might get an x amount of viewers but online and the digital view will be a million plus views so it's it's, there's so many different platforms where we can watch things and have things and have access to that I don't actually think it will go anywhere. Matthew to Ollie, uh, do you think streaming is now the new trend? This is where entertainment has to move to, to appeal to the, the younger market? Um, oh, that is a deep one. I mean, basically, yeah, as, as Louis quite rightly mentioned, things are changing in terms of how people watch telly. Whether it will be moving over to streaming, I'm not sure for the, for the time being, I think it will stay. I mean, if you look, there's still a lot of people watching um, entertainment telly and terrestrial TV as well. And as Shanna said, I mean, the, the overnight, which is basically what people view overnight as opposed to just live. People have busy lives now and they know they can catch up on things. So. I don't think it will be going anywhere for the time being, but you never know one day. I mean, shows have a, like, everything has a bit of a shelf life. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a knockout, isn't, isn't on the telly at the moment. You know what I mean? So that, you know, big entertainments will never go away, but they- You always... leave, it's a knockout. I used to love that, it's a knockout. No. <laughs> I'm older than you. I could have given birth to all of you. Uh, Delhi says, fantastic panel. He's really enjoying it. but. Uh, regardless of the shows you've worked on, what do you actually watch away from work? Great question, Dele. We'll start with you, Louis. You can't mention the show you're working on. Um, oh God, like if I'm being totally honest, I, um, what shows do I watch? So look, I, I love like things, you know, like I love the big nature documents like that, that, you know, like the planet Earth and all the BBC stuff, you know, like I'm a sucker for anything like that. You know, the flip side of it, I think because I work in television and because obviously we have quite busy jobs, I sometimes watch like the trashiest reality TV show. So like at the moment I'm into like series five of like Below Deck and it's like, I just, it's just like on in the background. I don't have to think of that. So yeah, I'm probably not the best person to ask, but yeah, I mean like tr trashy reality. Yay, we love it. Trash, trash, trash. Uh, Shala, what, you can't mention any shows you're working on, girlfriend. <laughs> What are you watching apart from all the starry ones? Well, I tell you what, I can't lie. I love a soap. Love a soap. All I do is come home and watch EastEnders. Love it. Can't lie. Or I'm more of a, I like watching a nice cookery programme. That's my, yeah. <laughs> putting, the, putting the Food Network channel on. <laughs> but but I'm, the, I'm the same. Like I watch the shows that I work on, I watch. And that's probably why I've got a job in that world because I know them inside out. I watch them and I, I love putting them on and just switching off and like, that's okay. probably why I work in that industry. Uh, good job, the bosses are listening. The bosses are listening, go girl! I watch uh, all the shows I make, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Gaz, what shows are you watching? Is it trash TV or soaps? I mean, I'm all trash. I mean, I love my trashy reality. I mean, I love, at the moment, I've like finished selling Sunset, which everyone else has. So yeah, I love Below Deck. I mean, that's what I like to watch. When you don't, I personally like to watch the shows I'm not working on. <laughs> The boss is watching. Of course she watches your shows. Of course she watches the shows you're working at. Don't you, Naz? All the time. I love them. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, I, I watch TV sort of for research, especially when I'm working on Gogglebox. Um, and it sort of helps you when you're making it as well. But when I'm not working and I'm not researching, I my enjoyable side likes to watch the most mind-numbing telly there is, really. Something that I don't have to really even think about because obviously it's a busy job. So when you come home, you just want to sort of veg out once you've done your research. So, I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah says you're all young and ambitious. So where is the future for you? And you know, in terms of us, the next generation, what's your best advice? Should we go for a runner? Should we go for a presenter? Or should we look into management? Great, great question, Sarah. So where do you see yourself in five years time? And in terms of job, career progression, is it a runner, a presenter? or trying to get into admin and management. So Louis, where do you see yourself in five years time? Oh, the, the, the dream interview question, literally, if I, if I had a pound for every time I've been asked that. Um, you know what, I never really necessarily planned my television career. You know, I never came into TV being like, this is where I want to get to, but I've just kind of worked my way up there. You know, like ultimately, I suppose like, I'd love to be involved in commissioning and creating kind of new shows. Um, in regards to kind of career progressions, I, I feel like the majority of people, you know, will come into TV as a runner level. And that's really, really way, like Ollie was saying earlier, of kind of having a little think and trying out different things to work out which avenue works for you, you know, whether you're more kind of like a production side and whether, you know, you're ahead of more logistics or whether you're a bit more creative, like creatively minded and you work in the editorial side of things. And, you know, within that, then, you know, if, Fundamentally, like wanting to be a presenter is actually what you want to do. You're in the right places and you're talking to the right people. So, you know, starting off as a runner is pretty much the best experience that you can do. And the nice thing with TV is that pretty much everyone has started their TV journey like that. So everyone knows what it's like to be a runner. Everyone has come, come up through the same, Absolutely. The same ladder. I made Gary Lineker cups of tea when I started. Milk and three sugars. Hello. Uh, Shala, where do you see yourself in five years and what is the best pro career progression for Sarah? So start with you, Shala. Um, again, I'm the same as Louis that I've never really kind of like mapped out what I wanted to do, but my, like I'm celeb talent casting. So I'm very much in that kind of kind of direction. So like talent exec is probably like my next step of where I want to be. So I'd like to be there. Um, and I'm the same, like I started off as a runner and I didn't actually know casting and talent was a thing. I wanted to be, I wanted to be a camera person. I was like, I want to make music videos. And I was like, I wanted to like pick up a camera and like direct. And then I got into TV as a runner, not knowing that these things existed. Oh. It's the best place to be at because you're in a position where you can absorb all the knowledge of what's going on around you and like also be in a position where if you make a mistake it's okay and you can learn something else or go in a different direction so I've done loads of different things like I've edit produced I've do interview producing but talent is my main thing be multi-skilled that's the yeah, that's, yeah so the, the it's 1000% to be a runner you can be in a good position to learn what okay. other directions you can go in Okay, uh, Naz, where will we see your lovely face in five years' time? Um, yeah, I mean, I would definitely like to kind of continue down the producing route um, and see what comes there. But like, yeah, as the panel says, sometimes you can't plan where you end up in TV. 
I guess the, you know, the best advice is, is like, don't be afraid to put your ideas forward. And I would always recommend that. And yeah, also once you get in, like you're going to be exposed, like everyone has said to other jobs. So don't be afraid to ask someone if you can shadow them and find out what you like. It's really crucial. And I wish someone told me that because you, you, that's basically how you find out where you, what you like, really. Ollie, are we going to see you presenting Britain's Got Talent? That's where you should be, and to deck look alike. Uh, five... <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Actually, Shella could be your agent. Hello, <laughs> this is great. Maz could look after all your stuff. Louis could write your comedy. Hello. <laughs> where are no, we going to see you in five... We're very much behind the camera, people. Um, <laughs> Well, um, where do I see myself in five years? It's hard to say. I mean, I think the beauty of TV is you, you can work it out as you go. Like, I mean, everyone sort of has an ambition and you know where you want to be, but there's no rules to, to TV. And that's the beautiful thing about it. You know, you can navigate your way through it. I mean, I do lots of different styles of producing and, you know, it's never hindered me so far. And I mean, they quite rightly said about being a runner and that's where you find out what, gives you that basically it just what gives you the juice like if someone rings me for a job and they say oh i'm doing this thing well don't rock the boat and i say can i tell it tell me a bit about it and then they tell you and you go and you just go yeah okay yeah i like that and then that's what that's ultimately how i run my tv career if i if i like the sound of it on the phone uh, and, and that, but i think that's the way everyone does it you know you go oh i like that show or oh god that sounds quite interesting yeah. and then um so in five years who knows but i'll you know i'll be a lot more experienced so ultimately i could move up a position okay you will see your face on the telly uh matthew says loving the panel taking a lot from this thank you guys for doing this uh just finally in conclusion what's the best advice you've ever been given and how has this impacted in you driving through your career a uh, great question matthew to end on so louis best advice you've been given Oh God, um, <laughs> probably the best advice that I've ever been given is um, an amazing exec that I worked with. And um, when things used to go wrong, she'd just, she'd just say, we're just making telly. That's literally it. We're just making telly. We're not changing the world. We're just making telly. And I think quite often, sometimes, you know, when you find yourself in a bit of a pickle or things aren't going the way that you planned or like a shoot is falling apart, you sometimes just have to tell yourself, we're just making telly. That's it. <laughs> we're just yeah. making telly. Yeah, exactly. No one's died. Just chill, yeah. chill, chill, chill. Uh, so, uh, Shala. Louis stole my answer. That's what oh. I was going to say. Boo. <laughs> I was like, no, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> to be fair, genuinely, that is something that I've been told in the past as well, and it stuck with me. But that kind of like, if you are making a mistake or if you know something's going wrong the best thing you can do is not try and cover your tracks like just be honest about it like that's probably what apart from don't worry you're not you know you're not making you know, you're just making telly apart from that obviously just owning up to what you've done and any mistakes you've done and it's everything's fine because you're not saving lives yeah. so that is pretty much louis stole my answer said it better and now uh, <laughs> and now i've got nothing to say so <laughs> we're gonna delete his zoom don't worry it's good <laughs> don't uh, best advice um preparation just prepare yourself prepare yourself for the interview prepare yourself for that research gig just make sure you're always prepared arrive early as well <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Oh gosh. Yeah. Oh, I, know. I was late for this Zoom. Hello. And Ollie, best advice you've been given? There's two. I think the first one is show you care. I think we all know within about three seconds if we know a runner cares. Um, and you know almost instantly. And second, this is for when you move up, if you want to do producing, people mirror you. So if you've got um if you're upbeat and happy and lively, they'll be upbeat, happy and lively. If you want them to be sad and you want them to, you know, feel emotive, then be emotive. And that's the best advice I've ever been given. That's fantastic. Well, honestly, it's just been a pleasure talking to you guys. You know, 
I've worked in the industry for 30 years and it's so great when you see young people like younger people like yourselves just really doing incredibly really well in the industry I think you all are all brilliant and I hope uh, their advice has been has helped you uh, please do you know retweet a uh, hashtag RTS careers fair if it's helped my bit of advice is you know very quickly don't just be a presenter, don't just aspire, aspire to be a presenter. So as Naz and Shella said, you've got to be multi-skilled. You know, you'll, you'll get there in the end if you're a presenter. And here's a little fact for you. When I did Loose Women presenting, I got paid about 400 quid a show. But when I developed an idea which went out on Channel 5, so you think you can teach, I made 27 grand. We don't like to talk about money, but ideas are the key, guys. Develop ideas and then see your way through. So it's not all about the shiny, shiny presenting. It's about what you can bring to the table. Okay, so that's my bit of advice. Uh, Louis Cryer, Sharla Dar, Naz Manzu, Oliver Knowles, you've been brilliant. Absolutely, give yourselves a round of applause. Make sure if you've not, uh, um, if you've not booked for further sessions, go onto the RTS website, book in and have a look at the ones that you missed. See you soon. Bye. Brilliant. I love this panel. Can I take them home? I am at home. Can I take them home? <laughs> Bye.